Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. A big thanks to all the new subscribers who have joined the channel. It's been another one of those crazy times this month and we really appreciate it. Today we're looking at the upcoming games for next week going up to Friday. And as always, it's a bit of a mixed bag. There are a few nice titles here, particularly ones from Capcom and NIS America. And there's also your usual pile of, uh, how best to describe it? <laughs> Less than stellar titles. Let's jump into the list. first game then is a title called Xeno Crisis from Bitmap Bureau. This looks a little bit like Alien Breed, Glenn and I were saying. It's launching at £15.99 on the 27th and it's an arena shooter in which one or two players can take control of battle-hardened marines. It looks really nice, I enjoy this style and you said as well Glenn that it looks a touch like Smash TV and I think you'd be right. One of the most interesting aspects here is that the artwork was done by Henk Nieborg who is a bit of a legend in the, the pixel art industry. There are 10 different weapons, a nice intense chip tune soundtrack, two difficulty levels and three modes of play here. One to keep your eye out for if you're fans of those other titles we mentioned. Next up we've got the really interesting looking Door Kickers Action Squad from Killhouse Games. This is also launching on the 27th at £13.49. Now the best way to describe this, it looks almost like Hotline Miami meets Katana Zero. It looks to be a little less strategy and it doesn't look like there's a rewind mechanic but the action here looks quite intense. Thankfully in a game like this it has an instant restart system. There are six playable characters with their own play styles and over 83 different levels to play through. There's 60 weapons weapons and gear and 20 enemy types, as well as the all-important couch and online cooperative play. I reckon Glenn and I are going to give this one a little bash this weekend and let you know if it's any good. The next two games are releasing from Capcom and it's nice to see that with their Resident Evil 5 and 6 releases that they've included a 33% discount if you own the other games, so at least they're slightly offering a discount there. If you've not played these games before, then, well, you follow Chris Redfield and Shiva Alomar as they venture to the heart of Africa to investigate an outbreak. It's nice that this has the co-op mode and it was one of the most enjoyable aspects for me when this released, as the story didn't quite do it for me in comparison to the fourth release. With Resident Evil 6, they took the whole action focus and pushed it up to 9. Here you can actually play up to 4 player co-op online. And again, they offer the 33% discount. There's demos of both of these titles, so it's worth checking them out if you've not yet played these games. This version also includes all the DLC, along with two costumes that were originally released via the Resident Evil.net exclusive. But you can now unlock those in the game itself. There's also, interestingly, six player online competitive multiplayer. It remains to be seen how well this is going to work with the Nintendo Switch's uh, interesting online implementation.
Next up then is Disgaea 4 Complete Plus from NIS America, which drops at a 20% off discount, about £35 here in the UK. I don't want to spoil too much of his review, but if you head over to the link in the description, you can go and check that one out. The next title is one that I'm really looking forward to, well, I say that, I've been playing it for the last week, and it's called Vampire. Now this is essentially a vampire simulator of sorts. The port is from the wizards over at Sabre Interactive who did the Witcher 3 port on the Nintendo Switch and I can tell you they have done a good job here. The year is 1918 and you've uh, just turned into a vampire. Your name is Dr. Jonathan Reed. Now interestingly you carry on your role as a doctor after becoming a vampire and every citizen in the game can become your prey. There's a load of interesting mechanics here, and not only will you be trying to solve various ailments, house style, throughout the game, but there's a good deal of combat in here as well. A really interesting title, and definitely one to keep your eye out for when our review drops next week. Now, before the Nintendo Switch, I used to be an avid PC gamer, and one of my favourite titles was a title called Left 4 Dead. Now, this was a four-player, split-screen, or online multiplayer, where you fire off loads of zombies. Earth, or Alien Horde, is essentially the alien version of that old game, and I can tell you, they have done a fantastic job. I've been playing this one over the last few days, and it's incredibly fun. It has four-player online mode, as well as two to four-player local wireless. There are four classes, here and as with the aforementioned title there's a full campaign to work your way through you can barricade doors to stop the hordes of aliens getting in and there are different varieties some of which are an absolute pain in the butt to defeat but the shooting's very solid this could most certainly be a bit of a hit next week It's been a long time since I played a Super Monkey Ball game, but we've got Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD coming to the Nintendo Switch next week. If ever there was a game that was just about having fun, it's this. You control a monkey who runs around in a ball as he tries to traverse a puzzle field level. There's quite a few multiplayer modes in here as well, and there's up to one to four player. There's a hundred different stages and challenges, and over ten different party games. There's a lot to do here, and I think with Christmas coming up, this could be one to keep your eye on. Close to the Sun is another title that I've been playing quite a lot of from Wired Productions. Now, when I first saw this, I thought, hang on, this is Bioshock on the Nintendo Switch, and if only that were the case. As it stands right now, there are a couple of performance issues. The visuals are nice, and you gradually discover more about Tesla as you're lured to this strangely familiar setting. You play as journalist Rose Archer as she steps aboard the Helios in search of her sister Ada. She soon discovers she's not in Kansas anymore, and things start going horribly wrong. A lot like, uh, Bioshock. Yeah. Anyway, we'll try and let you know what we think of this one next week. Like talent for the scientific Arts to expand the limits of human endeavor. Away from prying eyes and cynical money men, here all that matters is progress as we reach for the very stars themselves. It is our floating home and the cradle of mankind's technological evolution. 
You walk within the very future of the human race, and you are most, most welcome. Too close to the sun. The next two titles won't need any introduction if you were born before the year 2000, and it's the Disney classic games Aladdin and the Lion King. And well, I spent many, many an hour playing this back on the PC, on the, I think it was a 486 PC back in the day, and they're decent enough games. We have to go and do our homework and find out exactly what's changed, and I can tell you that there are a ton of new game modes. They've enhanced the visuals as well, there's a few different display options, plus there's multiple versions of the games, so it's not just the two titles on there, because these were on several different systems. If that's worth 31 quid to you, well they were classics, let's be honest, then uh, worth checking out. The next one is Harvest Moon Mad Dash from Rising Star Games and if you're familiar with the Harvest Moon series, imagine that turned into a mobile game and you're going to be pretty close to what this looks to be. You can go solo or take along friends to join you with this one with up to one to four player and this is really about fast paced action so it looks to be a little bit more like something along the lines of a overcooked title. I'm not going to lie, my alarm bells ring whenever I see a game implement the whole three star level system because it reeks, it absolutely reeks of cheap mobile. But who knows, this could be decent. Let me know down in the comments if you're looking forward to this one. The next title was one that caught my eye the second it dropped on the eShop, and it's Spaceland from Ilada Games. This is a top-down turn-based strategy game that has a sci-fi overlay. It's inspired by the best turn-based strategies of the old school, so I'm hoping original XCOM, things like that. There are more than 20 different enemies, from alien animals to dangerous monsters, futuristic equipment, colourful special effects, all the usual stuff that you'd expect here. But I don't know, like I said in a previous video, you sometimes get a sense for what's going to be good and this one is absolutely on my radar. Next up, and safe to say one of the biggest, if not the biggest, release this month, is Luigi's Mansion 3. Now, Glenn and I were lucky enough to play quite a bit of this at EGX, and from the sample we were able to play, they've done an excellent job. There's a few new mechanics in here as well, to keep things fresh, but everything you remember and love about the series is most certainly here. They've included a number of multiplayer modes as well, which are competitive, with 1-8 to eight player local, and 2-8 to eight player online. There should be more than enough here to keep you busy. Something strange is going on in this hotel, and Mario and friends have been kidnapped. Can Luigi work up the courage to save the day again? <laughs> Luigi's Mansion 3 Next up we have a really interesting title called The Big Journey, created by Nestor Yavorsky. This one's only £2.69 and it's 40% off at launch. A game doesn't necessarily have to be expensive to be good quality and I really enjoy the look of this one. There's six different worlds to bounce around. It describes itself as having relaxing gameplay and a toe-tapping original soundtrack. 
That soundtrack was written by the Chokernuts. Never heard of them. But either way, this looks semi-decent for the price. Some of you might write it off as a crappy looking mobile game, but I actually think this might be one to keep your eye out for when it drops on the 31st. The next game is called Yuri from Finger Lab. They're a French developer and this is a really quirky little title whereby you begin your adventure on a rolling bed. It has a little bit of a sonic about it this one. You're speeding through the levels, jumping from platform to platform and the Potier brothers took six years to develop it. It's got a very unique art style and the motions are really nice, fluid 60 frames per second on the switch and uses quite a few physics based mechanics. So far, I've been enjoying this a lot, and it's another cheaper title that drops on the 31st. Polly Roll's an interesting little title. It's very obviously inspired by Sonic the Hedgehog, which hopefully they've done quite well. It's from Hoff Studios and also drops on the 31st. It features about four to 10 hours of playtime. There are 11 different worlds and 36 levels to play through. There are also 11 bosses here. The thing that will make or break this is whether or not they've created enough unique to the game. I don't think people want complete rip-offs like we've seen with the recent release of a game that looks exactly like Cuphead. Or it doesn't actually, it looks like the knockoff Nigel version of Cuphead. But people don't want that. They want the developer to take inspiration from, but not completely copy a game. The next game, and another one in the Atelier series, is Atelier Riser, Ever Darkness and the Secret Hideout from Koei Tecmo Europe. It describes itself as about a girl and her friends on the verge of adulthood, discovering what's most important to them. Which would be complete, a complete mystery to me, to be honest. <laughs> This is an RPG that claims to have a unique combat system called the Synthesis System, in which players combine materials to create items to be used in combat. Doesn't sound very unique to me, to be honest. It has a combination of turn-based command battles and real-time elements, and says that the system allows you to sense the feeling of strengthening bonds with your friends more than ever. Well, that's most certainly a first. £49.99, it drops on the first. Next up, we've got Race with Ryan from Outright Games, which is also dropping on the first, and it's about £35. Now, I laughed at the title of this one with Glenn, but then I had a little look at the screenshots here, and it does look really nice. A little bit like that Meow Motors game. I thought that was going to be garbage, and it turned out to be a very good kart racer. Unfortunately, it didn't have any online multiplayer, and this has done exactly the same. It's got one to four player split screen, so there is that, and a career mode that you can play through in co-op with your friends. But all the usual things are here, like your power-ups including a uh, burger shield and six different worlds could be one to look out for i'm not really sure hopefully we can let you know more before it drops will you be the fastest racer Woo 
As usual guys, let me know down in the comments if you're going to be picking up any of these titles, which ones interest you the most. Thanks as always for all the support you've given us, and to our patrons, I think we've got 107 now, my goodness, that's decent. For all things Switch, all th I've forgotten the line, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!